these are the last few points of the first game of the Muhazen Haber match, which Dr. Muhazen wins 21 to 10. Uh, this, uh, these games were filmed by the photographic department of Memphis State University and produced by the Memphis Racquetball Association in January of 1972. The match took two and a half hours to play. Some 350 spectators viewed the match from various parts of the United States. The game is being played by Dr. E.F. Bud Mulhazen, a San Diego dentist, and Paul Haber from Chicago, the national handball champion five out of six past years. Haber is uh, 20 is uh, 35 years old and been playing handball since he was seven years old. This is the first point of the second game now of the match between Haber and Mulhausen, and the doctor rolls him out of serve. The doctor is 40 years old and began playing racquetball in 1968 just prior to winning the National Racquetball Championship. Prior to that time, Bud was a paddleball champion. Point for the doctor. He continued his form for the, on the second game as he had played in the first game. He won the first game 21-10, and this is after a two-minute rest. At this point, he was wiped. The doctor was wiping his glasses. A little delay in the game. This is a hinder ball. There was no place for the doctor to go. The referee called it a hinder and not an avoidable hinder. In the first game, Mulhuisen kept the serve low and fast, and beginning in the second game, the ball began to uh, get up a little too high. You saw the doctor wiping his hands on his uh, pants. This is where he had touched Haber and gotten them damp. We wiped the ball off and began again. Very excellent serve. Jumped into the corner and went dead. Same serve. Doctor returned that one. Mulhuisen caused two bounces on himself. In the third game, he has an occasion to ask uh, Paul if he is not going to call any double bounces on himself and uh, he gets no reply at that time. It's a kill shot by Haber. Backhand he calls a double bounce on it. Asked Haber at this point, are you going to call any on yourself, Paul? 
Haber looks to the referee and the referee did not see the double bounce. Haber lets him look at the ball. Back in play. Paul's shot skipped in. Mulhuizen served. The score uh, remains pretty close <clears throat> all the way to the point where Haber has the advantage 16-15 later in this film. Uh, usually it was just one point at a time until they reached that point. And then they stayed at 16-15 for a long time. There must have been 10 or 12 handouts at that point. These are two fine athletes who are perfect specimens of their games. I point out again that this film is shown at three-fourths of its normal speed and you would have to imagine that you would be unable to see the ball at full speed. That's a flat rollout by the doctor. The first game he was deadly with that shot. The second game he uh, hit fewer and the third game there were just only three or four flat rollouts for the doctor. It's a short serve. It touched the doctor's leg and Paul wanted it ball looked at and wiped off. That's a flat rollout, left hand kill by Haber. Haber, if you notice on his knees there, he stayed on his knees a good part of the match and there are some shots in the first reel, shows the bloody knees that uh, he slid around on. This is a tr tremendous left hand kill and Mulheiser knew that he had hit that ball too high. Haber was uh, able to keep that ball in, in the right rear corner where Mulhausen would have to backhand his ceiling shot and on many occasions the uh, ball went off of Mulhausen's racket straight to the ceiling and then to the floor never making the front wall. Some of the spectators thought that the doctor had miss uh, hit the ball but the the fact of the matter was that Haber put enough spin on the ball that when it hit the doctor's racket it went straight up to the ceiling. Haber is asking how many timeouts he's had and the referee tells him one and he calls for a timeout and towel. Now plays back in again. Haber down his knee. And then he roll, get, rolls the ball out.
This is a shot that Haber hit to the right front corner several times during the match, and there was no chance, no play. Dr. Muehlhausen, if you notice, dropped the ball and Haber refused to hand it to him. And the uh, doctor had to walk back and pick up the ball. Haber has now asked for a towel to uh, wipe up the floor with. These were delaying tactics that were used. Uh, We changed balls, we looked at the ball, we wiped up the floor, we changed gloves, we had torn gloves, we questioned the referee's calls. All of this uh, would give uh, Haber additional time to rest and recuperate. This is a discussion that ended up in Mulhausen's favor and a few choice words to the referee by Mr. Haber. Down on his knees, slamming the ball back off of the front wall, and then killing that right front corner with his left hand. Realizing rolls the ball to Paul and he lets it go to the front wall for additional time. A little contact with the feet. Haber feels like that this ought to be called an avoidable. The decision was it was a hinder, and the game is on again. Screen ball. Play over. This serve is fantastic. It jumps twice, once when it hits the floor in front of the doctor, and then it hits the back wall. It comes off at a different angle. Mulhausen had said if he ever gets to hop the ball, that'll be it, but he doesn't intend to let him hop it. And he was able to do that in the first game. He kept the ball down low. Or Paul was on the defensive with practically every shot. Prior to the match, uh, the two contestants and the referee met in the tournament office, uh, the three of them with the Sports Illustrated a reporter and photographer and discuss the rules and the play of the game and there were never two more uh, nervous and sincere people at that point. Uh, probably there were three counting the referee. The referee had seen Mulhausen practice his serve to his uh, to Haber's left side and had determined after watching it that if Mulhausen stood too close to the left side wall it would have to be called a screen in case he aced uh, Haber. <coughs> However there was only one occasion during the match that the uh, referee felt like the ball came close enough to uh, merit a, a screen call. Right here, Haber felt like he needed a little hinder call out of the referee and didn't get it, and Muehlhausen rolls the ball out.
the nerves seemed to have left both players right after they got on the court in the first game. They settled down and uh, began to play as the champions that they are. Got to be a hinder. Uh, the one of the few calls that uh, Paul didn't comment on. Ball moves so fast that it is just impossible to get out of the right way every time. And so the avoidable hinders in a normal game were called hinders and the point was played over each time. This is a beautiful little forearm touch up the front that too short for Paul to get to. Now here he wants to look at his hand to see if it's wet. This was uh, agreed upon that Haber would be able to look at the doctor's right hand because that's the hand that's touching the ball and Paul wants to be sure that it's dry. You notice he put the ball in his palm of his hand he serves but the ball remains dry throughout the uh, match ball wants to see the ball again This uh, game, you can notice the serve that Mühlheisen is just getting that ball too high. This is a hinder. That was an ace. A little short on the front there, and it's a handout behavior, so. Paul crashing into the side walls and the back walls, but the instant that he hits the ball, he's back on his feet. Three hundred and fifty spectators at Memphis State's new three and a half million dollar complex. Beautiful facilities at the university. Grateful to Dr. C.C. C. Humphreys and the staff at Memphis State. This is one of the serves right down the lane that uh, Mulehizer had practiced uh, the day before. It wasn't too effective in the match. Here we've got water on the floor and Haber wants to take a little time out to wipe it off. <coughs> Some question whether these delaying tactics uh, uh, helped uh, Haber any more than they did uh, the doctor. At this point, uh, both were getting fatigued, but it was only about the middle of the second game. Long ways to go yet. The backhand shot to the right corner. 
that's the same front wall left side wall serve that he used so effectively in the first game but it continued to say that the serve got away from him got a little too high and Haber uh, was able to go from the defense to the offense there's the serve that Haber used that hit the floor and hopped into the back wall and then hopped back out and uh, kept Mulhausen completely off balance in that particular serve. Must have gotten eight to ten points for Paul. Relatively easy serve by the doctor. Screen ball, a little hinder, play over. At this point, I'll tell you that after the match was over, the third game was completed, uh, the referee spoke to Paul Haber outside the court and complimented him on his play, uh, suggested that possibly Haber was the greatest athlete he'd ever seen, and that uh, he, as, he, as a referee, that he did the best job that he, he could do under the circumstances of a this mixed game. Paul's reply to the referee was, I am and you did. After other matches, the uh, reputation of Paul Haber is that he really celebrates uh, after the matches are over. Uh, understand that after this match was over that he went out with some of the Memphis Handball Association boys and uh, he drank about three or four Coca-Colas and then asked to be excused and, and left the party for, for the evening. He said this was a physical endurance test that the likes of which he had never had before. Both truly great athletes perfect condition each have uh, all the shots look at that recovery watch this next one Notice Mulhausen plants his feet over on that left side, uh, and that's where he planned to stand when he served straight down the left wall. But uh, as I say, he didn't try that but about three times. There's a flat roll out by the doctor. Here's a little discussion on the ball and change of balls. Haber hops the ball out of the corner into Bud, and uh, it's a point for Haber. This ball uh, skipped. This ball was short. There's one of the few times that Bud came back down the left left wall. Most of his serves was 
front and right wall. Ball skipped in, he had it. He talked to himself that he settled back down. He passed him and Hayward could not make the replay. This was a ball that hit the doctor and he called a hinder. This is a play over. Good shot by the doctor. contact and the hinder was called on that last point. We felt like that uh, before the match that Haber would allow practically every ball to uh, go to the back wall and that uh, take the steam off of it then he would hit it uh, this is not so. If you notice right there, that was straight off the front wall, and it's been estimated ball travels 150, 200 miles an hour off that racket. Beautiful shot by the doctor. Haber skips it into the right front corner. Uh-oh, here's a hinder. Uh, Mühlheisen was trying to get out from that corner, and Haber was not watching, walked right into him. Referee, uh, as I stated before, he felt like this was a action that was moving too fast for the hinder to react to it and allowed only a hinder and, and not an avoidable. Seems uh, Dr. Mühlhausen is now playing a little bit harder, a little better uh, effect with his shots. And then Paul takes the wind out of him with a rollout. Whoop. Paul wanted a hinder here, the referee didn't give it, and then Mühlheiser skipped in, and Paul uh, had a few words to say as he walked back to serve, and then he decides to tell the referee what a hinder is. There is a long scoreless stretch when the score gets to be 16 Haber, 15 Mühlheiser. And eventually in this second game, Paul is able to pull it off at a 21-16, 21-15 uh, was the score on the second game, 21-15, after having lost the first one, 21-10. Now the 
on this play, this will end up in a hinder, and it's the last, uh, next to last uh, serve. Uh, this is the hinder. The next serve, Paul makes it, and the score is 21 to 15. The match, the game is over, tied one and one, waiting on the third game. This is the third and final game of the match between Paul Haber and Dr. Mühlheisen in Memphis, Tennessee. Mühlheisen won the first match, first game, 21-10. Haber won the second, 21-15. Mühlheisen skips this ball into the floor. Haber is now serving. The second game, Mühlheisen came back with a lot of hop on the ball, as you saw in that last point. He continually keeps the doctor in this backhand position and continually digs them out of the corners. Haber is now serving and he's spinning the ball and jumps and hops. If you notice that serve, it was an ace. Here's a kill shot. The Mühlheisen returns and Haber does again. And a backhand flip. Mühlheisen can't seem to put it away, and Haber puts a left-hand kill into the right corner. Then the doctor skips into the floor. Haber now serving. See the ball jump and hop into the doctor. It was one of many times this occurred. This game was billed as Mr. Clean Meets the Devil. Some call it Hands Against the Racket. Here's a fantastic recovery. but he can't seem to keep it going and the ball skips in the floor. Dispute. But the ball was uh, good and it had skipped. Haber is serving again. Here's that same serve, keeping him into the corner. Good pass shot. Haber wanted a screen ball there, and the uh, referee determined it was a pass. Sat out. High lob got Muley in the backcourt. Realize and skips another one in. It was said that the ball would determine the outcome of the game in that it would be a fast bounce that Haber would be accustomed to and Muhlheisen felt that the he thought that ball was short at that point and it was ruled a good serve. Mühlheisen would have the advantage of the 17 inch racket. That's a long serve.
Beautiful Kill by Paul Haber. 35-year-old Paul Haber with 28 years of experience of playing handball, playing a 40-year-old dentist, Dr. Bud Muhlhausen, San Diego, It was estimated that this ball, when it was hit by the racket by the doctor, was traveling at least 200 miles an hour. This was a situation where Paul thought he had bounced the ball too many times and he served a bad serve. To get his composure back and his timing. Continually keeps Mulhausen off guard and serving into that backhand corner. The overhand slam went into the floor. Mulhausen knew it was a bad shot. He was a little disgusted with himself at this point. I remind you again that these films are being shown at 25% reduction in speed. At this point with the ball on the floor, it was a timeout, a towel timeout. It's a short serve. A little discussion with the referee. Muehlheiser throws the ball and hits Haber. A little pushing going on. Backhand slap and a hinder call. Ball is skipped. Haber seemed to anticipate every shot being in the right place at the right time. In the first game, Mulhausen ran the score to 9-0 and finally ended it 21-10. In the second game, the score will reach 16-15. And Mulhausen's backhand game seems to completely go apart. He's missing ceiling shots and kill shots in the first game that he literally rolled out. This ball hit Mulhausen. He called it a hinder. Haber wanted the referee to inspect the ball. In this third game, Haber runs the score to 17-0 before the doctor is able to score his first point.
that was a long serve hit the back wall short serve serve doubles Haber's serve is short Ball hits the doctor, hinders call. Ed Haber wanted the referee to look at the ball. He wanted to change it. And one of the agreements before the match started was that any time that Paul wanted a ball change, he could have it. He felt that hitting of the racket, hitting the ball with the racket would knock it out of round. Also, Paul was permitted any time he wanted a glove change to change gloves. And one other concession was that he would be permitted to look at the doctor's right hand the doctor is left-handed. He would be permitted to look at his right hand to see if it were wet because he would be touching the ball with that hand. He slams the wall after he skips the ball in. Two or three occasions, Haber did look at the doctor's hand and they, and they were dry. The doctor just does not perspire like most athletes. A flat rollout from about three feet away from the front wall. The hinder. One of the things uh, to be remembered by spectators is that this ball is moving so fast and the players have to move equally as fast and what would normally be an avoidable hinder in the referee's opinion turns out to be a simple hinder because of the speed of the play. One of the few ceiling shots that Haber missed. you notice the doctor seemed to have hit the wall there before he hit the ball. Short serve. Ball hopping and jumping. Haber keeps him back on his backhand. He's down in a corner in the floor. That one he couldn't handle. This ball hits the doctor. He calls a hinder. Little momentum going now for Dr. Mulhazen.
This bow looked as though it might have uh, skipped to the doctor and Haber wants to change gloves. Now with new gloves we're ready to go again. Watch this recovery. Bounced off of the wall and was back in position. The ball didn't bounce. This is an ace serve. And a short serve. <coughs> Remembering his doubles, he served previously, he served a safe one, and then he nonchalantly hits it into the floor. He couldn't believe that shot. Tremendous effort. Doctor rolls it out with a backhand to the right front wall. Point for the doctor. Haber wanted a hinder there, but the uh, referee did not allow it. A little discussion took place at that point. Most discussions were between Haber and the referee. This last this match lasted uh, about two and a half hours. Haber, you see, calls a timeout and slouches into the side wall. Tremendous energy being expended. Here's his famous lob to the back. Ball skipped, Mulehaz and questioned the referee, accepted the decision, Haber is ready to serve. Short serve. <clears throat> As I said, the film has shown a 25% reduction in speed because at full speed you would be unable to see the ball. Ball rippled off of his racket to the left front wall, side wall, and then played out. And Haber was uh, out of position and did not make an attempt. This is a good shot, and uh, Haber questions the referee in his own way, and had a few words to say, but the. Decision stood, the ball was good. Backhand shot 
hit the ceiling and then down to the floor, never making the front wall. Many times Haber forced Mulehausen into this situation. Backhand stabs off of the floor on his knees, still on his knees. Fantastic recovery and ability. Ball was short. Later, Paul describes this as probably the most exciting game that he'd ever played on the handball, that had ever been played on a handball court. The outcome was to be determined on whoever controlled the ball. And the doctor felt that his ability with the racket would give him the whoop, little attack from the rear. It was called a hinder, and this was called a short serve. At this point, the doctor was beginning to lose a little of his cool and uh, Head against the wall, the doctor still slamming at him. This is a rollout shot. The timeout was called by Mulehausen. If you notice that ball jump then, but the doctor slammed it back past him. This is a hinder. And here the doctor caused two bounces on Haber, but Haber didn't admit to it, and referee didn't call it, and play continues. And Mulhausen goes at the referee pretty good for one of the few times uh, in the match that he vocally let loose. Very difficult to see double bounces as fast as this ball travels. Here we had contact uh, and the referee determined that it uh, didn't interfere with the play. Haber had a few choice words. At this point the referee was a villain on both sides. Both men awfully tired. And here we go with a little discussion. Uh, the ball skipped and Haber threw it up to the referee. game was a little sloppy at this point and both had to regroup and 
take stock, and get back into the game. In the ball. Now this is a shot that you couldn't see that hit the doorknob in the back. And there was no decision prior to the game that there would be any court hinders. And in view of that, we, it was determined that everything was in play and this was uh, awarded in the doctor's favor. Moments after this, the ball will hit the mullion between the glass and the plaster and it'll come straight down and Haver won't be able to play it. There'll be two calls in favor of Mulhuizen uh, with reference to court hinders. Immediately following the ball hitting the door, the referee announced that everything in court was in play and within one point after that the ball hit the mullion and came straight down. Here he touched him with a racket. Haber wants a hinder because he touched him with a racket. The referee asked the doctor if he did touch him. He said he did. Point was taken back and play resumed. The score is now 20-16. Muehlhausen got out of his way that time. A little pushing going on. 2016, 16-20. Muehlhausen skips it in. Game match point. Doctor runs right into the Haber. The referee calls an avoidable hinder. All the time Haber's asking for it, the referee's already declared it. He shakes hands with the doctor. The match is over. Haber has won this game 21 16. The first game he lost 21 10. The second game he won 21 15. The third game he wins, 21-16. <clears throat> the game ends on an avoidable hinder, giving Haber the 21st point for the game match. Conference with the players, it was a great to have a new ball anytime he wanted it. Love being shown to the referee is being torn. You'll see the thumb seam is torn when he turns his hand around. The one other thing that was unusual was that he had the right to inspect uh, Dr. Mulhuizen's right his uh, right hand any time that he wanted to. It's ungloved, and uh, there was some question of whether or not there would be perspiration on uh, this hand and get the ball wet. But it uh, never was the case during the match. Uh, the doctor did not perspire uh, 
did not interfere with the, the ball. Look at this ball, comes straight off the front wall and Haber throws it to the ceiling and takes the ball with a left backhand shove underneath him. And then he puts it on the ceiling again. It's a tremendous effort by Paul. Just how many times can you recover after that? There's a short serve. 12 is now serving 19. Haber slams the glass after losing that point. And he runs up in the back of uh, the doctor, called a hinder than a short serve against the doctor and the score is 13-19. Haber makes a great save on his stomach, slams it back at Haber and he's back in time to recover. Another shot with his head against the wall. And remember these films are being shown to you at 25% reduction in the normal speed. At normal speed you would not see the ball. Now Haber rolls it out and the crowd gets a big thrill from that shot. And we're getting uh, close to the point. Uh, he called body contact at that point and uh, it was not allowed. Muleheiser's waiting to serve and the referee tells Mr. Haber to play ball. In just a second Muleheiser will there's the shot right there that hit the doorknob and bounced out of play. And in the absence of any court hinders decided upon prior to the match, the referee ruled that everything in the court was in play. And the, the uh, point was awarded uh, to Mulhazen. And in just a second, you'll see that ball hit the million and come straight down. And uh, a request for a a hinder was uh, not given, uh, an avoidable hinder was not given here. Just a tremendous effort by these two athletes. The score is now 15 serving 20. Concentration, Mühlenhausen. Now he touched him with a racket on the back there, and Mühlenhausen wants to start, stop the play, and uh, he hit him with a with the racket. Referee determined that it was not a sufficient interference to affect the game, and he should not have stopped. And uh, Mr. Dr. Mühlenhausen is now serving. It's 15 to 20. Has lost his footing a little bit. Both players getting tremendously fatigued, and here's the ball hit the million, and came straight down, and uh, point was uh, is ruled in favor of Dr. Mulhazen. Paul does a little extra pushing here, and uh, Mulhazen serves over. Score is now. Oh, he made a bad shot, and he knew that. 20 game point serving. Here's the avoidable hinder. The doctor could have moved out of the way and did not. Paul is asking for and got an avoidable hinder call. Muhlenheiser cannot believe what he is hearing. Haber walks off the court. He scored 21 16 match and game, and he's received by his wife outside the door. And his many friends who followed him here from Chicago. Tremendous athlete. Both both of these gentlemen were tremendous on the court. Three hundred and fifty spectators uh, were well pleased with uh, what they saw on that court at Memphis State that day.
Had the, had the doctor been able to keep the ball low as he had in the first game, it might have been a different story. Gives you a different perspective and you see how agile these two men are. Now we're going back up into the gallery. Mulehausen skips in. Paul is uh, able to keep uh, Doc back in the uh, right corner with that backhand uh, shot of Mulehausen's that uh, he has a lot of trouble with. And he gingerly puts that in the corner and Haber kicks it. He should have been up there, he thought. This lob takes uh, Mulehausen off of his feet. Back in the corner again. Estimation of the speed of this uh, ball is anywhere from 160 to 200 miles an hour when it's hit by that racket. And the thing that surprised most of the players who talked about it was that uh, Haber is hitting that ball off of the front wall and he, we had thought that he would let this ball go to the back wall take the steam off of it, but you notice he's catching a good many of these just flat off the front wall. This shot with that left hand up in that front right corner gets the nod of approval from Doc Mulehausen, and uh, it was a tremendous shot and one that he used several times in the match. Here it is again, but this time it didn't work. It uh, was a little short. Here's a crowd watching. Putting it in his left hand, but Haber throws the ball up on the ceiling. You notice his hands, how he twists it and turns that ball around. On his knees, his knees were, we had to stop the match twice to wipe blood from the floor. He was on his knees constantly. Haber thought that was a skip ball, but was not. Now the score is three to 12, and Haber's on his knees again. Catching that ball straight off the front wall. And he taps him on the seat with his racket that he's done the shot again, and that is out. The score is three to 12 to three, and that was a hinder, and the referee called it an avoidable hinder, followed by a sure. And Mulehausen skips in, looks at his racket. And he blasts it out. The score is three, serving 13, and Haber puts one on the ceiling, back in that back right corner, and this was about one of eight times that Mulehausen was unable to return that ball out of that back right corner. This match lasted for well over two hours and uh, showed the con condition that these people, these men were in. Tremendous shot back in that right front corner again, and Mulehausen nods his head. Now, this is a avoidable hinder, an unavoidable hinder, and uh, Haber was of the opinion that uh, we should have had a call there. Now, he was on the floor and in the way of Mulehausen, and another, another unavoidable hinder was called. It's just a hinder. Mulehauser slams it and gets Haber completely out of position on that one and goes around him. Short serve and a second serve coming. Ball hit uh, Mulehausen and it play over. Mulehausen was in Paul's way, and Paul again thought that uh, there ought to have been a avoidable hinder called against uh, the doctor, but it was not at this point.
Haber slams into the wall and many times during this match. Impossible to see how he can hit the wall and be back in position again. Got that on a second bounce and uh, then he put it away to take him out of service and Mulehausen is serving. Score is now five, serving 15. And he skipped it in and watch the heads move and you see the concentration of the gallery. You wanna go up and there we go. Five serving 15. Back in that right back corner. This is a good shot by the doctor. Slam it right up in the right front corner. Good backhand. Six serving 15. Seven serving 15 and the, you notice in some of the pickups that the other 17 inches of that racket is a real advantage for the doctor. This is called a screen ball. Service is now eight serving 15 and we serve that over. Hit the ball right back down the alley for point nine serving 15. Tremendous left hand save and he left his body twice, but this one doesn't make it. Body left the floor and through the air. This was a whirly dirly ball in the back and it went too many walls for Haber and he couldn't handle it. Now we're taking a shot through the glass in the back door again. And uh, you can see the different way the doctor's hitting the ball this game compared to the first game. It's estimated he must have rolled 15 out in the first game and maybe, maybe he got six in the second game and probably three or four in the final game. Hit that ball right on the button and Mühlheiser nods his head as a good shot. Start to play again. Right here, Haber was right. It should have been called a hinder. It was not. Play continued and Mühlheiser skipped the ball in. Due to the length of the racket, extra length, Haber had to give more ground to his opponent than he normally would give to a handball player. Didn't seem to affect his timing. There's another lob to the back right that Mühlheisen was unable to get and then an ace serve. And you notice how he's making that ball hop in that corner. He rolls out the final point of the second game. Now this is the beginning of the third game after a, about a 10 minute break. And Haber comes back with uh, very much confidence and here's that shot back in that right rear corner again. He had Muley back there a good bit of this third game. This one you see the jump and hop, has completely misjudged it and then the, the next ball it jumped on him. And he's got him on the floor and watch this recovery. But 
that one got away from him, it, uh, it's about all you can do to get two of those back. This ball went past in a hurry. Haber felt like he should have had a screen on that, but uh, referee felt he was out of position at that time. Mulhuizen is getting fatigued, as is Haber. You can see the, the fatigueness in the way the ball is being hit compared to the first game. Haber makes his big run and uh, actually accumulates 17 points to zero before the doctor is able to make his points. <coughs> the ball is coming, uh, that Haber is serving, is skipping and, and jumping. Now that uh, Hinder was called on that and looked as if Haber was going to hit from one position then he moved back into the line which Mulhuizen was moving and a simple Hinder was called and had a little discussion on that one. This overhead shot uh, was a poor shot and Mulhuizen knew it, put his hands on his hips and discussed. Very important point that he just missed. This was a short serve. Here's a little pushing instant going on and a little backhand slap. Over exaggerated hinder. And this slam into the floor was a crucial time for uh, For Mulehausen making his move now, it's zero, serving 17. Now we've moved up to two, serving 17, and little close up shots of their bodies and feet to show the agility that these men had. 18, serving two. Haber misses it. It's two serving 18. And Haber slams into the side wall and point for the doctor. Racquetball players had high hopes at this point that the doctor was going to make a f successful move into this match. Score is now nine, serving 18. Haber's, uh, in this period of time, is changing the ball, uh, asking for towel for wipe off the floor, towel to wipe off the ball. Changed gloves twice. In a minute, you'll see that uh, just after changing gloves, uh, one of his gloves uh, turns up torn, which calls for another timeout. The score is now 18 serving 17, and they've just had a glove change. He got by Haber with that uh, forearm drive. And Haber was out, a little out of position, unable to get to the back court. Now he's got uh, 
Serve working for him pretty good. Short serve, and that's. It was 18 9, and he's hit into the floor. Haber serving. What a tremendous save, but Mühlhausen puts it away. Huber hits the ball to the ceiling and crashes to the floor and back in position. First game in which Mühlhausen wins 21 to 10. Mühlheisen is able to keep that ball low and fast in the first game, which he was not able to do in the second and third games. Haber makes a tremendous backhand save. Mühlheisen skips the ball in and calls it against himself. And now the point is 3-0. That ball is coming awfully low and awfully fast. Mühlhausen had everybody would be able to notice how low he's hitting it. Notice in the second and third games that he's not able to accomplish this. Prior to the uh, match, there was a player and referee conference in which hinders were discussed and screen serves. This is some of the crowd that witnessed the match at 350 people at Memphis State. Now we're into the second game, and Mühlhausen has won the first match, the first game, 21-10, uh, and he's starting in on the second. Haber's down the floor again as he found himself constantly. He hits a crotch serve to even the score one and one in the second game. Haber's able to hop that ball with his hand, and this is called a hinder. And uh, Haber was discussing how much room he should be given to play the ball. In the player referee uh, discussion, there was one omission, and that is court hinders, and these. These hinders were not discussed, and you'll see where it comes into play in the third game. Uh, when the ball hits the back door knob and bounces out of play, and right after that, the ball hits the mullion between the glass and the plaster and drops down, and both of these uh, shots are against Haber. It's a backhand save, if you notice that, and he stays down, and uh, Mühlheisen thought he got it on a second bounce, but he did not. Haber's leading at this point, 6-1, to one, and skipping in, 7-1. Right hand shot to the, f to the corner does not make it and the service is out. Mühlheisen is hitting an overhead slam. If you notice the ball that uh, Mühlheisen is not able to get it down low like he was in the first game. Score is now two serving seven and this is a shot 